Hello and welcome back to AC's Make and Repair. Well today on the channel I'm going to show you how I'm going to repair the shape of the end of these screwdrivers. Yeah, some are pretty badly worn and rounded over like this one's been abused. Some of these are just picked up that people are going to discard uh, off uh, jobs I had to do clean outs on. So I'm going to show you how I heat it up. Just a simple method. And then I'm going to forge it out a bit just to draw the end out of it to reshape the end and then I'll file it back to shape. And then I'll temper it again at the end. So I'll show you how I do that. As you can see, some of these are fairly warm. Not really a nice gentle taper, they're a drop taper. This one here is semi okay. But on it, I just want a bit more length in it. This one here is pretty well totally kaput. So I want to draw it out at a bit more length and a bit more width about it. And this one here, I started doing a little bit of work on it, but it, as you can see, it needs a little bit more width and a bit more length with it. So I'll draw it out on the anvil too. So I'll show you how I hit it up. And we'll go from there. So as you can see, I've just got two extruded bricks. It's a uh, half, uh, not quite half bricks are. These are extruded, they've got a hole in them. Two clay bricks are. And I've just <coughs> put a bit of broken brick, brick in the back of that one, as you can see. To stop the heat from totally dissipating out. It's a pretty simple setup and just holds the heat in a bit. So what I do is actually put the screwdriver in. Uh, in there like that, and lean it up a bit like that, and let the let the heat of the torch mainly heat from about there on. Only the area on to work, and we go from there. It's a map gas torch, and I just put the nozzle in there like that, and aim it towards the blade. And I'll start out and do that now. You can pretty well use any sort of heat source you want to um, do this process. You might have an old forge you want to use. Uh, you might have some oxyacetylene that you can heat these up with. Uh, you might have an LP for uh, LP gas um, uh, forge that you've got made. Anything could do the job. Just to heat it up cherry red. So I adjust the blade of the screwdriver and the torch angle. So I'm putting the heat exactly where I want it on the blade and I let it heat until it's red hot and then I take it out and forge it off this old bit of anvil uh, round steel that I use as an anvil um, because of the full sunlight that we're in full daylight here you don't actually see it really glowing red hot but mark my words it's definitely red hot when I take it out uh, to, to forge it out and draw it out and shape it So here I'm reshaping the blade end of the screwdriver. I concentrate on drawing it out. Both sides I work on so it's done evenly. I also do the edges as well. I constantly stop and sight down the edge in the flat just to make sure I've got it equal in proportion. I'll show you how I do this on all four. I'll just fast forward through it. But like I said, it doesn't look red hot when it comes out, but it is. Um, it doesn't show through the camera for some unknown reason, but it is very hot. It's cooling down quite rapidly uh, towards the end when I'm finishing shaping. But uh, I will reheat these red hot again after I've shaped them, uh, just to reset uh, the steel to maximum hardness and the structure of the steel uh, before I temper them. You may notice as I finish forging the screwdriver blade to the shape I desire, I actually bend down and push it into the soil at my feet. Just a means to cool it down and bring it back to room, room temperature. So I'll go ahead now and I'll show you how I finish the rest of these. I actually do another one that I don't show here in this video. I actually show the finished product, but I um, don't show the forging of it. I, I come across it as I was um, 
tidying up some stuff and I thought I'll do that one at the same time. If you work it right you can actually forge a fair amount of the shape into it um, so you don't have to file and dress it up towards the end. You can actually forge a lot of the shape into it and it saves a lot of filing. So just bear that in mind. It's actually easier to work it this way than, than file and file and file. Well, in some cases people use uh, belt lanishes, things like that. Now we start to shape it. Uh, I'll use a coarse file as well as a smoothing file to um, get the shape that I desire. I constantly stop and look at the proportions of it to make sure it's right. These square shanked um, screwdrivers I actually find harder to forge. As you forge them they want to twist a bit. Um, but usually when you come to filing stage you can actually uh, get any imperfections out by filing. Um, this was a screwdriver that was a fairly rounded point on it and I wanted to restore a broader face on it which I have a broader tip on it which I have and it's coming up quite good so I do use a belt linisher to uh, do some work on these two just to only get a better smoother finish to linish the finish quite nice and neat and um, you'll see me using that throughout uh, the dressing of these four. All four took about 15 minutes all up to, to get the shape that I desired and uh, so I'll show how I did that now. They're quite a handy tool, these uh, belt linishes. This one's got a small, uh, I think it's about a 7 inch disc, uh, this one, and uh, it's not too bad either. And I use just for dressing different stuff from time to time. It does a good job. One day I might end up making a better one, a bigger, longer belt, and uh, for better application, more of a vertical belt, I think. This one has its limitations being horizontal. Now I'll go on to the reheating process, so re reheat these to uh, cherry red, I do check them with a magnet as I go but generally when they get to cherry red um, I quench them straight away in oil um, just to reset the structure of the steel and to bring it to maximum hardness now if I left them at maximum hardness uh, the tips would be quite brittle and could even break or chip so I'm going to back them off and temper them and I'll show you that process after I 
uh, do this process of reheating and um, quenching them. So I'll go through that now. So you'll see it reheat. I'll quench them right below um, what I'm showing here now. Now after the hardening process, I let the steel cool down to room temperature and then I go into this process, which is the tempering process. What this does is take the full hardness out of the steel and just takes it back a, a portion to allow flex in the steel. If we'd left it at that full hardness as before, it could be brittle, could chip off, uh, it could break. Um, it has no flex in it at all when it's at that full hardness temperature. So we do this tempering process. Now I temper this when it gets to about 300 degrees C, um, which is, I think is about 590 uh, Fahrenheit. Don't quote me on that. But it's about 300 C, that, which is uh, dark blue. I heat away from the tip, as you can see I'm doing now. And you'll see the blue up towards the tip, moving up towards the tip. Of course it gets thinner and I'm pointing to where it is blue now with that pointer and you'll see that blue go towards the tip now once that blue hits the tip I quench it at that point to lock that temper in at that at that temperature and that's allowed that to be uh, to bring it back a bit of maximum hardness to allow some flex and some uh, so it's not so brittle in the point of that screwdriver we're getting to that point now and any second now I'll take that away and quench it. There we go. There's that can of oil beside it, you can't see it. It's a bit hard to show you both at the same time. So you've probably noticed the steel, I've actually had to shine it up in between the hardening process and this are now. So it's nice and shiny. That's how you can read the colour. The colour indicates um, the temperature of the steel and we're looking for that dark blue colour. And then we quench it like I just did just then. I'll go through now and you'll see how I uh, temper the rest of these two. So here's the finished product. <clears throat> yes, they are old screwdrivers, but they're a far cry from the tips that were on them before. Nice and reshaped and retempered, ready for many, many more hours of work. Like I said, a lot of these were old screwdrivers that I picked up off jobs that people were going to discard or throw out. I, uh, I do cleanups as part of my work, and some of these would have come off them jobs too. But some of them are good screwdrivers and um, too good to throw out. So thanks for joining me on this one, hope it was a help, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.